I'm really excited to be here and I, I do appreciate how busy everyone is at the end of the year. So thank you for making the time today. Um, as Amani mentioned, my, my focus today is on quality and will. So I will just let you see my presentation. Um, so I'm from the University of Sydney and I'm located within a reasonably large Faculty of Medicine and Health and um, we're a central unit that focuses on work integrated learning. I, um, I guess I come from a position where it's mostly about placements but the focus of today will be around a framework that has a potential for any work integrated learning not limited to placements, thinking more about industry projects and entrepreneurial activities. So a very quick overview of um, where the project team was coming from in terms of quality and will, uh, then talk a little bit about a particular project that was supported by ASIN in uh, 2018, a grant to develop a framework of quality assurance in will. And those are the four domains that um, we created and then go through with a few um, local examples from my work integrated learning team, just to kind of, I think, bring the framework uh, to life a little bit. So the, the kind of place that we were coming from in terms of thinking about um, designing work integrated learning that was of a high quality, that was really informed by research and actually kind of focused on student learning before, during and after placements um, was really important when we were developing the grant proposal. And um, the, I guess the complexity of will is something that has been discussed for some time. It's something that many of you would be very familiar with. And um, the more recent research, I think um, Winchester Cito's review actually acknowledged that there are something like nine dimensions of quality in will and that understanding these and kind of understanding the complexity of relationships across these is very important because kind of picking up on Roller's point, students' experience of will is, is very important to their learning. And so the complexity can sort of play out in different ways for different students and different experiences. Um, I was fortunate to be um, a team member on a a successful ASIN grant. Uh, the project leads were Matthew Campbell, Lindy McAllister and Leonie Russell. And I suspect Matthew Campbell is actually one of the participants attending today. So um, I wholeheartedly salute, acknowledge his, Lindy and Leonie's leadership in what, um, what has been a really fun actual grant. So it's, it's, um, it's been good to think about quality in a way that is meaningful and to really try to unpack how we can I think measure quality in a way that's useful to people who are working in the space. So the, the goals were, you know, relatively simple, develop a framework based on everything that we know kind of that's relevant um, on quality so far. So that's, you know, relatively easy and then test it, you know, how, how hard can it be? We've got a year, $10,000 seems like a completely reasonable task. And so, Magically, we actually did the task that we said we would do. Definitely was Matthew's leadership. Must acknowledge him multiple times now that I know he's listening. Um, so happily, uh, we did focus on um, a bit of a, a sort of available, accessible literature as well as uh, institutional practice. So very much that kind of desktop analysis in combination with interviews from about, I think we ended up with about 15 uh, or so interviews across about that many higher education institutions at all levels. So all the way through to kind of the professional staff on the ground, organizing placements to DVC uh, level of staff. So trying to figure out what quality will actually look like in different places to different people so that we could then come up with a framework that could be useful to people. Um, the next stage was uh, a, a sort of a different process in terms of using workshops not to disseminate and promote a framework, but actually to refine and test and develop it a little bit more. So putting, um, putting those things out to the people that were working in the space, um, doing a survey, working with people and kind of saying, yeah, does this hang together? And I mean, that's probably 
one of the favourite things of people who work at universities to do is to see what someone else has done and go, nah, don't like what you did there. And did you know that's not the term we use here? Actually, the best term you should be using is this. So I think people really engaged at a surface level initially and then kind of at that more meaningful level to say, oh, actually, now that you mention it, the framework does hang together or I really like what you've done with that domain. So that process was kind of exploring and sort of refining it a little bit more. And then the next stage within our own project team was looking at benchmarking um, within kind of discipline level at a faculty level and also at the institutional level. So picking a couple of the framework domains and actually sort of trying to say, could we use this framework that we're claiming is really useful to benchmark our own practices in a way that's helpful to us to kind of ask questions about, you know, do we have good quality in this domain, but maybe we don't have the evidence for it? Or, you know, are we even asking the questions that would help us to find the right sorts of evidence? Is there information that's somewhere in the institution, but we don't know where it is? So that I think was a really useful process in that even having a look across our three institutions at a couple of different levels, we started to come up with kind of different questions around how you might actually use the framework in a way that can help you to design quality will experiences, but also to provide evidence that what you're already doing is actually a reasonable quality. So we have four broad domains of practice in our framework. And then within each of those, we have a set of standards. Um, those standards go across kind of before, during and after placements or before, during and after work integrated learning experiences. And so the report that's almost done, not quite yet, um, has the domains, the standards, and then also some illustrations of practice from various universities. And so that was collected during our project um, exploration phase, as well as during the benchmarking phase. So that the standards, um, Kind of have some examples within them but then also you've actually got the real the real uh, practice illustration thinking about each of the domains now there is student experience curriculum design institutional requirements and stakeholder engagement and each of those has what we're calling a guiding principle so the idea that a student experience should provide students with a scaffolded, connected and supported pedagogical experience, you know, high quality curriculum design, it's embedded, accessible, transformative learning, assessment with the intended and enacted curriculum. For um, institutional requirements, you know, you have proper staff management, proper risk management, appropriate will reporting, um, as well as those kind of systems of ongoing improvement. And the stakeholder engagement section, I think, is something that is, is quite broad in terms of the, the range of will experiences. So that idea of engagement, connection, responsiveness, you know, quality communication and quality relationships with a, a reasonably diverse group of stakeholders, industry, government, professional bodies, your educators, and of course, students. Now, just to kind of hopefully um, make the framework a little bit more um, tangible. I've asked some of my colleagues to give me a snapshot of an example of a will experience or a will project that they're working on. And so in the spirit of being kind of having some integrity, I always like to do these tasks myself so that I haven't given someone an impossible task to do, you know, fingers crossed. So that's why I might, my first one is up there for me. Um, and then, so what we've got here is a series of projects at various stages. So the, the project that I'm, I'm working on is a relatively new one. The, the next one is probably maybe a year or two old. The third one is, I think it's probably about 13 years worth, of maybe more of work that Lynn's been doing in that space. And the fourth one is probably more the two to five year mark. Just to kind of give you a sense that it's not a framework that created these projects. But the projects already exist, just like all the kind of will activities exist wherever they do in your own institutions. But that what the framework might help to do is to help you to ask questions about quality and to kind of unpack the practices that are already happening in that space. Or if you're thinking about designing will, 
you know, does it allow you to sort of inform where you might go with it? So um, the first domain is the student experience domain. And this project is um, called Assessing and Enhancing Student Self-Regulated Learning Online, looking at their social, uh, social learning, informal learning, and kind of the peer relationships, peer network building. Um, this is sort of focusing on that idea that will experiences with students should be safe and supportive and that support and guidance is provided to students within the will experience. So that idea that kind of, yes, it's a good experience, it happens, but also you've got clear structures in place that enable students to have that. Might just talk a little bit about each of the projects. So the reason why I think this is a cool project is partly because it takes, um, takes some of the really good stuff around self-regulated learning research and responds to a call um, for a review in there. So the idea is that um, students on work integrated learning have, I guess, huge opportunities to develop skills, but at the same time, there's typically high expectations that they will somehow already have those skills, often anyway. Um, and so what, what we were, uh, I guess, trying to focus on here is looking at the evidence that the skills are there and kind of focusing on developing that space. So there's a lot of text on this page, but I guess the focus of it is not so much what's happening in this project, but that you can kind of pick a domain within the framework and figure out, well, does, does this project that I think is very exciting, is it actually meeting the needs of students on work integrated learning or is it achieving you know, perhaps a, a worthy research aim, but not necessarily kind of a high quality real aim. Um, another example project um, from a colleague, Jacqueline Raymond, looked at curriculum design. And so here we've got assessment that's designed to support valid judgments of EP, exercise physiology students, on placement. And what it does is that it's actually focusing on the professional standards and that students' learning is measured against the intended outcome. So it's, it's achieving alignment, but it's also linking back to the professional body. And in the health context, for us, that's incredibly important. So for this particular assessment tool, it was developed by the project team and they used, um, I guess they worked with uh, various EPs at various universities and it was a fairly involved process but it links very, very clearly to the professional competencies. So they kind of are tying into their relationships with stakeholders as well. Um, the reasonably well-established um, area of research that Lynn Munro is working in includes reflections on workplace dilemmas. And this is a, a potentially messy space because it starts to reveal uh, I guess they're not so nice experiences that students can have out in the real world and the impact that that can have on their learning. And so what becomes important when you're thinking about the institutional requirements for high quality will is to say, what are the systems and processes that are in place that actually help students to then navigate the potentially difficult situations, but also how they are, um, I guess, providing opportunities. So for example, professional development comes into this space so that people know what the systems are that they're meant to be working within. What, what are the legal and risk management frameworks? What are the compliance procedures? So the focus here is kind of putting on something, something again, like a system that's incredibly complex, breaking it down into manageable chunks. Well, do we have shared goals? You know, are we actually providing support to our staff so they can understand what's going on? Are we evaluating things and doing long-term tracking? And again, this is a summary of the research to sort of say what's going on for students. Um, it's important because I think professionalism is something that's taught often and kind of professional behaviour is something that's, that we sort of promote amongst students and sort of present it as something that maybe is not... Um, not something that's hard, you know, you just sort of be professional. But this research starts to unpack that a little bit more and say, well, in hierarchies, in workplaces, in hospitals, um, 
in business settings, you know, you, you get people who may not be ethical, you get people who may not be moral. And so you might see things that will make you feel uncomfortable. Um, the next domain is stakeholder engagement. And so this is important in that we have many students on many placements with multiple sites. And so maintaining um, and actually kind of enhancing relationships with our stakeholders has a huge impact on the quality of well experiences for our students. And so the ways in which we let people in, and it's kind of nice to sort of link to Roller's suggestions around how we work with industry and how we involve them in conversations. Because I think it's really important to think about what are the policies and procedures in place that support, for example, partner agreements or financial agreements or the quality of supervision provided by your educators or your industry partners. Um, and here, the focus is on students' readiness for placement to think about um, kind of developing a tool that can measure their readiness so that students don't go out onto placement until they're ready is, is kind of an important thing, but how are we actually measuring that and assessing that and how are we involving students and educators in the conversation to develop a tool that actually tests and measure it and says, okay, well, you've actually met the standard, you're ready to go out on placement, you're going to have a successful experience. Um, is something that's important because the effects of failing a placement are huge for students and huge for educators. So um, kind of positive and negative reasons for engaging in this work. That's kind of the quick summary. I might just go very quickly back to sort of the, the main slide. I had planned to put it there again. Um, but just to kind of pick up on that idea very quickly with a lot of content, my apologies there, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't narrow it down to sort of just choosing one or two. Um, I think the, the domains that we've offered here as, um, as sort of dot points, it's a nice framework at this kind of, you know, sort of the columns, tables, it all looks very neat and tidy. It's designed to put together something that can allow you to dive in at any point. So if you want to focus on a faculty or a unit of study or an institution level, you can ask the questions and you can drive it. Um, it's not designed to kind of solve all the problems necessarily, but it would help you to ask the questions and to gather the evidence together that you could, you could then use to benchmark with a colleague or to benchmark with yourself in terms of um, improving from kind of one year to the next in, in kind of changing things around. So I think, I think it's, it's kind of nice in that it's tried to take something that is incredibly complex and multi-layered and multidisciplinary potentially, potentially and say, okay, well, let's just look at it little bit by little bit and try to kind of pull things together as a meaningful whole.